Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a one versus one for you today. This one's going to be on the Rieger 6 Highlands, and it's between Jean Lu and Wings of Silver. Both Cybern, both nearly identically ranked. This should be a pretty dang good game. I do have a brief synopsis on hand of what actually happens, and I do have to warn you, this may get a little boring around the middle part, but the ending is worth it if you stick around. I have not yet experienced it myself, but I hear it is pretty freaking hysterical. Let's go ahead and see what these guys are doing early on in this game. Wings of Silver going for a pretty standard build. Looks like we've got a land factory first, four mechs, assist hydro, and then an air factory. Little bit scant on the power, but maybe he can make up for that with a little bit of reclaim or something else. He is going to go ahead and grab that rock up there. Like I said, pretty normal build. Jean Lu, on the other hand, has gone for some early P gens right next to his land factory. A little bit of aggression. He's got two hunters moving out on the map. And then he is going to go for a little bit later air factory and then some P-Gen spam. Now this is going to do him a lot of good because he is going to have a hunter directly intersecting this engineer, which is counting on getting that manual reclaim. And then this hunter is going to be out to the side for denial on that expansion, which happens to be by the same engineer. But maybe he will get some use out of it anyway. I do like early aggression plays because you get to see those combat units out and hopefully some good comes of it. But there is a Mantis, which is probably going to nail down that Hunter before it gets anywhere. So one disadvantage of having to run all the way across the map is that by the time you get way over there, you may in fact have a tank waiting on you. And that is the case. There it goes, the horrible accuracy of the Mantis dooming it to failure. And it will get another pass. Dodge, little man. A little bit of a dodge, but not enough. That engineer will move over to the side, but there is a second chance to pick it up. There are no combat units over there, and that hunter was not picked up by the scout, so I think he will probably peg down that engineer. Bomber out for Jean Lu. Looks like he went bomber, whereas Wings of Silver went for an interceptor, so that thing will be booking its way across the map. Hopefully, it'll be able to take out an expansion near or three and pay for itself. Scout over to the left, Interceptor to the front, going to totally miss that bomber, and there goes the second one, but it looks like that will be queued up for a kill on those engineers, and there's the drop, one down, winging off map, but he will probably go down before he can make a second pass. A little bit of damage, not much, and that hunter picking up that little kill, that was close. There was an attempted reclaim, leaving it with two, count it, two health. And he was able to kill that engineer. That's about the closest you can possibly come to dying with a hunter and not actually die. Jean Lu moving out to the left. He is going to pick up those mass extractors and probably move over to the reclaim on that side. And Wings of Silver is doing pretty much exactly the same thing, slightly ahead of him. Wings is behind in mass by one per tick and a bit on power. It looks like Jean Lu has actually overbuilt power. Let's take a look. 131 in the green on power and stalling for 15 mass. So yeah, a little bit of an overbuild there. Wings of Silver is doing better. You can see he's plus 98 and blipping negative as he's getting reclaim in. He is plus just a little bit and sitting about exactly where you want to when you're doing your initial build. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm not that great at early builds. I'm not that great at one versus one. But it's intriguing to me the balance between, you know, if you build too much power, then you're actually short mass because the power generators cost mass to build. And it's maybe a little bit counterintuitive, but uh, hopefully it does make sense. And that is something that you can do to greatly improve your efficiency in the early game is just to decide how much power exactly that you need and not a single P-Gen extra. jean Lu throwing down some more. Uh, some more land factories, those are going to be pumping out Mantis at an unfortunately crippled rate due to his mass stalling. Looks like 330 income at the start for him and 1,000 for Wings of Silver, which is another reason that he is far ahead. The Air Force is roughly even, but here's an anti-air turret, which is going to be able to help out those interceptors tremendously. Strong air win for Jean Lu. That 700 mass is quite a few tanks, about 14 tanks difference between these two armies. So obviously the person with more reclaim, gonna do way better. 
Wings picking off a couple of tanks there. He's already sucked up his reclaim. He's going to move in and grab those mass extractors over to the right-hand side. jean Lu not moving for his. He's actually going to walk past his reclaim and not pick it up, which is a huge, huge mistake. That would bring him up to even reclaim numbers with red. So the problem that he's going to have here, oh, that is beautiful. Beautiful. It's going to be three Mantis dead <laughs> to a single point defense. That is fantastic. Well-placed defense, and there are no Medusas in sight. There's the first two way back there. So he's going to have to come up with a way to deal with that. Not enough units on Jean-Luc's side. Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc Picard. That is what's on my brain, but I know that we're not actually playing in Star Trek, so totally fine. Point defense gone down there, which is kind of an interesting standoff with Wings of Silver. Wings of Silver throwing down a point defense of his own. I don't really see a rhyme or reason to it, but you know what? These guys can do whatever they please. jean Lu building up his expansion over there. As I mentioned just a minute ago, skipping over that mass entirely. Wall section is going down for Wings of Silver. Of course, you would want to barricade the entrance closest to the ACU because it's not like ACUs can walk up and reclaim the walls or anything. Right. The unit collision is not going to favor jean Lu in the middle because there are massively superior numbers on the red side. So he is pretty much going to get Raffle Stomped, which is going to be lessened slightly by the point defense that's hanging around in the back right there. Engineer trying to build up wall sections. Red is going to decide that, you know what? It's not worth it to try to overtake that position. We're just going to stand off a little. I'm curious to see. He has some intel. Yes, there is a radar. And Jean Lu, on the other hand, pretty much... Oh, there's a radar as well. Okay, so his is just a little bit farther back. Not a whole lot. Let's see, that is relatively well scouted. I don't think there's any issues there. Jean Lu, on the other hand... That's very out-of-date information. jean Lu pulling 39 mass per tick and Wings of Silver 40-something? Maybe, I think. He's in a vicious power stall at the moment. Probably trying to get an upgrade. What are you doing, good sir? Speed building a T2 P-Gen. He's got a T2 Air Factory online, which means there's probably going to be Corsairs at some point in this game. And on the south side, we've got pretty much perfect eco balance for jean Lu, who is currently in the middle of a T2 mechs upgrade. He is a bit behind on his number of T2 mechs, but I'm sure he'll get there soon enough. This bothers me, though, because there are enough units there controlled properly to take out a lot of this. Looks like he is moving for T2 land and T2 air. Let's take a look at the reclaim numbers here. 4,057 versus 2,700. Not quite double the reclaim. That would be why he has got multiple factory upgrades and he's still way ahead in units. We've got a T2 upgrade on the air factory. Just going to continue pumping out interceptors. He does have a Corsair. But it looks like he's not planning on anything serious as far as T2 air is concerned. He is, however, continuing to pump out what he needs based strictly off of T1 P-Gens. There are two T2s planned, but they are next to a T1 factory. Not entirely sure what's going on there. But, you know, if he can sort his power situation, all the more power to him. Medusa's devastating that group of units, proving why Medusa's are amazing. And voice breaks are even better. <clears throat> Looks like we've got a T2 mass extractor out there. All the home... RT2. We got any more going up? We do not. But Wings has capped 50 mass income. He's at a sustained 53 versus the 30 or so for Jean Lu, which may be a little bit deceptive because he has power stalling. Just like his northern opponent. He is waiting a little bit too long to build T2 power, does not have enough T1, and that's gonna force him into a bit of an abrupt power stall. Not the ideal place to be, because Power Stall is by far the worst thing that you can do for your game under any circumstances. jean Lu pretty much chilling out with a completely and totally unupgraded commander. And let's see, Wings of Silver is currently dropping T2. So he's going to have a little bit of extra health, a little bit of extra regen. 
but not really taking a very aggressive stance. Got Mantis moving up, finding the wall sections. Maybe they'll be able to kill it. That engineer is going to die anyway, one way or the other. But for now, those guys are just going to be content to chill on their side of the wall. No T2 land yet for Jean Lu, which may start causing problems because we have a T2 support factory online, which is going to be pumping out, yes, rhinos. And rhinos coming from the main factory as well with heavy, heavy assistance. Once those, once those clumps of T2 consolidate at the front, it's going to be extremely hard going for this T1 force. And there go the Corsairs. They're going to start dropping a few of those tanks, but I just don't think... Is he going to be able to keep them alive? Red does not have enough interceptors, so they're all going to die, but there's a flak. Mobile flak, bane of the existence of T1 and T2 air. He's got to target that first, otherwise he's going to lose all of his Corsairs, but those Corsairs are going to move northward. Lost a section of walls, tanks moving in, going to die horribly to a couple of Rhinos, and interceptors going to go after those Corsairs. Corsairs died, did not really kill that much, nothing too badly damaged. The P-Gens are under a T2 shield, which is a wise investment when you've got T2 fighter bombers on the map, pretty much always going to go for a power snipe in that kind of situation, so having shields over your P-Gens is definitely a good thing. Not for Jean Lu apparently though. So that's going to be a very, very slight air win for Red. He's got about maybe a third again, the number of interceptors is blue, maybe a little tiny bit more than that, but there's still a couple Corsairs in Jean Lu's back pocket, which he's going to abuse as best he can to try and knock back these units. Unfortunately, not using the Shift G commands because he is obviously not blanketing those units with fire. He's going after them as sequential targets, which is a complete and utter disaster of a mistake when you are killing T1 because then you are just wasting tons and tons of DPS. We can now say that the air wind is strong with Wings of Silver. He has got a massive stack of interceptors hovering over all of his units, offering the protection that only they can versus Corsairs. It's like paying off the mob boss in your favor. Jean Lu overcharging his way through that clump of units. There's a lot of T2 there. A bit of danger to the commander, but I think with some careful overcharges he should be fine. Especially thanks to the two T1 power generators in the wall sections that were blocking fire at his commander. So dipping down to 5900 health, not a lethal amount, nothing that's putting him in immediate danger, but definitely more than you want to be taking from your enemy. I can never get over how awesome this game looks in some situations. Scuttle, scuttle, scuttle. If you're afraid of spiders, do not look at the screen now because mantis are terrifying. I spy a Cerberus turret, actually two Cerberus turrets, for laying down some extended range damage on those rhinos. Looks like we're going for a T3 HQ on the south side. Lots more T2 mechs up here and a T3 HQ going down for Wings of Silver as well. Looks like 79 mass income versus 61 with a slight map control advantage towards Red, but Red has not claimed all of his mass extractors. For that matter, Blue has not either, but he is reclaiming his mess. He lost that just a few minutes ago to a unit incursion, which it looks like is happening again. And he is doing his best to reclaim some of that mass. Maybe that will get rid of that disadvantage he's been riding with for pretty much this entire game. Lots of T2 units out on the field. Those are going to try to directly engage this clump, but I think he's going to end up losing more than he bargained for in this situation. Got our first brick rolling off the factory. Hopefully that will alleviate some of the tension on that side. Jean Lu is sitting on 9,100 reclaim, 94, 95, and 69, seven for Wings of Silver. So about a 3,000 mass advantage to Jean Lu, mostly because he's killed off an army in his proximity and he is reclaiming that to the best of his abilities. T2 tanks moving in once again versus Jean Lu. So many T1 point events, which obviously are the best possible tool versus T2 tanks. There's a lot of them though, and Jean Lu is losing health fast 
He has got to run, moving back. 4,400 health. And he is picking up a couple of veterancy there, so he will be able to survive, I think. Just barely ticking under 4,000. But there goes the Corsair. Going to die to Mobile Flak, and that is that. 2,900 health. A-OK. -okay. He may be in the red zone, but I think he will be fine. Interceptor's moving in. Why are you doing this? You know there is a flak there. Flak shredding the flank of that group. Most of the interceptors are going to stay behind those, so that's going to be an easy kill off of the ones who are forward. Stringing units into a clump is not a good idea, my friend. Not something that you want to be doing at all. Bricks are headed north. Looks like we've got a total of four with two together, trying to lay waste to those groups of T1. And we've got a steady stream of bricks headed out for red as well. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a pair on the front line. So obviously two versus one is going to win. Three versus two now, just about to be four. Hmm. The longer they chill in the middle here, the further ahead red is going to get because he is pulling in much more mass per tick. Looks like about 95 or so. Jean Lu at 1400 14,000 reclaim, sorry, wings of silver at 12,000. Slight advantage still towards Jean Lu. And I'm pretty sure that is basically the only thing keeping him alive. Trebuchet hurling shells in the direction of those T2 tanks. Pretty pretty fireworks. I do love trebuchets. I, it intrigues me how this game has separate uh, explosion types for every one of the factions. I don't know how many of y'all have uh, noticed that, but the ACUs, each ACU has a different explosion. My favorite is the Seraphim. It's a five-pointed star, which is pretty freaking awesome looking. There goes Corsairs for the dreaded power snipe. Oh, that is bad. That is so very, very bad. Jean Lu knocked down to 1.1k from 2000 in a heartbeat. I think he will be able to get this one up before he power stalls with a little cape with a little bit of extra management. Thankfully, he is going to be all right due to having overbuilt power before. Please, please, please build shields. Why are you building two PGens at once when you're approaching power stall? That doesn't make any sense. Finish one, then build the other, because you need the power now, not later. Oh well, he's going to do what he feels like, apparently. Corsair is moving in, trying to knock out a couple of these bricks. There are as many bricks on this side, plus some T2, so I'm not sure why he doesn't just bum rush it and kill those things. But apparently that is not what he is in this game for. So he's going to let those guys escape and just gradually throw a little bit of damage their way with the trebuchet. The bestest target softener in FA. I like the siren red shocking effect. That right there. I don't know how many of you ever played with RK's explosions mod, but some of those were pretty freaking epic. Um, especially the Cybern Battleship when it was going down because it had the red lightning all over as the reactor failed. Really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. I'm not sure where that mod has actually gotten off to. I think it may have broken with the new patches. I'm not entirely sure. Someone should poke RK and get him to confirm whether or not there is actually a functioning version of RK's explosion mod. That was kind of fun to play with at some points. Jean Lu throwing down a lot of shields, which I don't necessarily blame him for, considering the fact that he has bricks approaching his ACU. Interceptor collision is going to favor blue, it seems, mostly due to a bad series of turns by Wings of Silver, but this is not where you want to have your ACU. We've got seven bricks closing on this location, with only one at Jean Lu's disposal. He's going to overcharge the loner out there. That leaves six. You cannot overcharge six bricks fast enough to save a T1 ACU unless they're clumped up and you can kill several of them with one overcharge. But thankfully, Red is just kind of ignoring the fact that uh, there was an ACU right there and he is walking his bricks northward, so no harm done. Those are going to go down to a combination of point defense, fire, and corsairs. Not going to do an inordinate amount of damage. 
but I'm I'm not very thrilled with that uh, targeting decision making process. Seems like he could have actually scored an ACU kill there. I think that Jean Lu is going to be headed for the water. On Rieger, there are a couple of spots where you can get in water deep enough to hide your ACU's head, and I do believe that is one of them. We will be able to duck and cover in there, hide away from anything that might try to get him, such as the Boogie Monster or various and sundry other horror movie icons. Actually, we're getting up on Halloween. I had not really particularly thought of that, but it is this week. Interesting. The year is flying away. Bricks at the center from both ends. Let's see, looks like we've got about seven or so versus four. Obviously, that's going to favor red, and a large portion of this is because Wings of Silver has a substantial economic lead. 154 versus 57. 23,000 mass reclaimed for John Liu and 19,000 for Wings of Silver. So about a 4,000 lead for Blue. And once again, that is just about the only thing keeping him in this match. That's giving him just barely enough bricks to make Red think twice about ramming directly into his base. But unfortunately, those bricks are disappearing at a pretty astonishing rate. Before long here, Red is going to be able to completely swarm Blue. Not entirely sure what Blue is going to do to get out of this mess. We have to find out what happens. Because things are not looking good. We've got about 60-65% map control for Red. A double to triple economic advantage. He has started a Monkey Lord. Is this an all or nothing gambit? I think this is the very definition. Because if that Monkey Lord fails, he will no longer have any semblance of map control. Because he is about to lose all of his expansions. Not sure why Wings of Silver is sitting still there. He could go after the Mass Extractors. There's only one Engineer guarding them. I mean, I know that there was a Hero Engineer up here that just about reclaimed the lab. But I don't think you can reclaim a brick with a T1 Engineer and hope to survive. Oh my goodness. There's T3 Air as well. Wings of Silver outclassing Blue in pretty much every way imaginable at this point and unit count in air and in map control. So things are not looking bright for the future of Jean Lu. He had so many interceptors that he's actually dropped a couple of ASF. But you know what? Especially versus out of fuel planes, ASF are just so far superior. And I don't think there's any use for that now. Someone was commenting the other day, I never see pro players build air staging. Well, 1300 rank ladder player. I know it's not exactly pro, but it's up there. And he's building air staging. So now you've never, now you've not never seen it before. Because I am showing it to you. So much tech going on. Where is, uh, oh, he's got a T3 P gen over here. I was about to say, how is he sustaining that? He's got three T2s and a T3 over there for a total of 8.4k income and resource allocation on the ACU, which is pretty much the only way to do it. Really the only way. That Monkey Lord is now about halfway finished, but there's enough bricks on this map to obliterate the face off of any monkey that dares to show its face. It looks like he's rushing all of his engineers to that project, focusing 100% of his income and his build power on that project this is this is terrifyingly bad we're now down to about 25 percent map control with blue and his acu is basically just hiding in the corner trying not to die should some torpedo bombers get fielded that compute that acu would be dead in a heartbeat but it looks like red is content just to build ASF. Let's go ahead and slow this down a little bit and enjoy some of this epic epicness in the middle here. So many bricks moving this way. Well, hello, um, low to high poly texture switch. It's funny how bricks off in the distance are basically just squares. And then once you get close, they're awesome. It is what it is with games, I suppose. 
I'm actually, I did not realize that Jean Lu had that many bricks. It's a fairly respectable amount. With the Monkey Lord, it might actually be enough to make a difference. Well, no. How many have we got here? Wings has a total of 33 with 29 of them on the front lines, which is about double what you need to kill a brick. Blue has 11. So theoretically, not even theoretically, red does have enough firepower to focus fire the monkey lord and kill it and have enough left over to more than deal with all of those bricks. So blue is pretty much screwed no matter how you look at it. It's like we've got total air control for red, total map control for red, and more than enough units to deal with anything that jean Luc can throw at him. He is building strap bombers. Looks like he's about to go for the snipe. Maybe he's scouting out. Let's see what he has on the radar. Does not have intel on that ACU. Basically knows where everything on the map is. Has awesome radar coverage, but no line of sight on that commander, which is going to be problematic when he's trying to kill it. That monkey lord is going to break right. Oh no. There's a monkey lord from the north as well. So, yeah, Wings of Silver has got this. Definitely got this. Strap Bomber moving in, trying to lay down some area of effect damage on those bricks. As I always say about area of effect, when you're doing the damage that your unit deals to four, five, six units at a time, you are exponentially increasing the mass effectiveness of your units. Now, Strap Bomber saw the Monkey Lord. It's flying directly over the Monkey Lord which is headed to the right, and now this Monkey Lord is on a dead set course for the base here. Why is he not attacking that? Why is he not sending bricks over there? I do not understand. Well, he can kill all of this, and he'll still have time to go intercept it, so I guess it's fine. He probably... Nope, he does not have it sighted. Okay, this is starting to worry me a little bit. No, he's sending all of the bricks to the base. Well, jean is going to lose his entire base, and I don't think that's actually a problem for him because he was going to lose it anyway. Maybe this Monkey Lord will get far enough up here before it gets noticed before Red can respond to it. All the ASF that were here that were going to side it just flew away. Red pulled them back. And they're now patrolling directly over the ACU. And now they're moving completely away. So that Monkey Lord is going to get here before anything can see it. Monkey Lord absolutely trashing jean Lu's base. There's going to be nothing left of it after this. He's just going to have to go on where he knew the ACU was a few minutes ago. jean Lu down to 33 income and 5k power. Does he have resource allocation? He does not. Monkey Lords are a horrific machine of war when it really gets down to it because that 4,000 DPS beam is pretty much the worst thing that can be thrown at you. All right, jean Lu, Let's track this Monkey Lord in. This cannot work. There goes one shield. The ACU has not moved yet. There goes the ACU, and I think it's going to be too late because that Monkey Lord is now well within reach of the ACU. Can he deal with it? There's strats. One over there. He could overcharge it, but no! ACU blast right at the very end. Let's take inventory. We have... Four engineers, one mass extractor, and one commander, and one monkey lord. That's it. Maybe a handful of walls. Do walls count for anything? I don't think they should count for anything. So yeah, we've got a total, total of seven units on the map for jean Lu with zero income. One mass, 20 power per tick, back to stock. And he got the kill with that monkey lord slipped out the back. I think this can qualify as an epic fail on Wings of Silver's part. Because he literally flew over the monkey lord that was going around the back way to kill him. And he did not counteract it. I don't know what happened there. 
But that is why you don't ever give up, folks. You got a monkey lord in your back pocket. You might as well ram it up in there and see how far it goes. All right, that's going to wrap it up for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Please, please send me your replays. I need some material. There have been a lot of guys that have been sending me replays recently, and I do thoroughly enjoy watching them. Unfortunately, most of them have not been real conducive for casting. So I do need some good games sent to me. I get a lot of requests for high-ranking games, but no one sends me high-ranking games. So I can't really make that happen. So anyway, if you've come across any good games, shoot them my way. I would be eternally grateful to you. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.